It's 8 a.m. I've been making milk tea for more than 10 years. So today I'm going to show you how I do it. Now the ingredients of making milk tea is very simple. All you need is some sort of black tea, some sort of milk or creamer, and then a little bit of sugar. However, the way and the proportion that you combine all these will make a huge difference in the final outcome. Let's first start with the black tea. If you're in a pinch, go ahead, you can use Limton black tea. It tastes not bad. One of my favorites is PG Tips black tea. Each serving tends to contain a bit more black tea than other types of bag teas. Now you can get the premium kind of this and it will taste a little bit better. I'd say about 10, 20% better, but for daily usage, this is just as good. I have over here a tea container and inside is some of my tea. I have a sachet of PG Tips black tea over here and inside it's some loose leaf as well. Now you can use either, but today I'm gonna use a loose leaf black tea. But in order to use this, you need some sort of very fine strainer for tea so that you can filter out all the tea leaves when you pour it out. I also have a very good tea over here. This is a TWG Earl Grey tea. I bought this at an airport and I like this kind of tea. It's from Singapore and it's very, very fragrant. -y. You can see inside the black tea, there's a little bit of blue flower called Bergman. This gives it a very unique aroma to the tea. This is an example of a can of condensed milk. Now when you buy one of these, don't forget to check out the ingredients because sometimes it's not just milk and sugar. This brand over here, when you look at the ingredients, it does contain only milk and sugar. Sometimes they contain palm oil and other preservatives, which is something I do not want. So if you do buy a different brand, buy something that only has milk and sugar in it. Now I'm pretty picky about the concentration of my black tea, so I'll need a very precise amount of water here. I want to have a little bit more water than what I finally will end up with because the tea will absorb a little bit of water as well as evaporate some water while I'm cooking it. This is my tea kettle and I prefer to brew tea in the kettle rather than outside of it. If I open it up, you'll see that inside I have some leftover tea from yesterday, so now I need to clean this up and I'll show you how to do this. Pour some water in, swish it around, pour it down the drain like this, but my drain has a strainer and then there's still a little bit of tea left, so I'm gonna do it again. Okay, so now it's all clean. There's no tea left in there. Now I'm gonna turn on the heat. I'm gonna add my cup of water here. I'm only making one serving. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of tea here. I'm very particular about the amount of tea. This is the amount of right tea. Now I would say this is too little, okay? If you add this much, it's not gonna be strong enough of flavor. So just know that like a difference of this much can matter a lot. I'm going to take my measurement of what I normally eyeball like this, and then I'm gonna measure it for you guys so you guys can see how much is in here. It's roughly a level one tablespoon. But you gotta realize whatever tea you use, it may be a different concentration, so you need to adjust it according to the taste. I'm going to put it in the hot water here. I'm going to put the lid back on. It's already boiling, so now I'm going to turn off the heat. Right now I'm going to start a timer for 5 minutes. Because after it boils, I want it to brew for 5 minutes inside this teapot. Now I don't want this thing to get cold, so I'm leaving part of it on the heat still. I can tell that it stopped boiling, so you can kind of move it a little towards the heat more to keep it, um, you know, at a hot temperature. Because if you take this teapot and completely remove it, it's gonna start to get cold. That means it's not gonna brew as well. Black tea for milk tea, you wanna brew it very strongly. Now the final temperature at which you drink your milk tea matters a lot as well. If you put your hot milk tea in a cold cup, it's gonna suck away all that heat from your hot tea. So what I prefer to do while the tea is brewing is to add a tiny bit of water into my cup, just maybe a quarter ways full, and I'll put it in the microwave for about 45 to 60 seconds to make the cup hot. Now if I'm not recording right now, the tea takes five minutes to brew. I might just start this up and I might go wash the dishes or something. So I'm gonna do something in between rather than sit around and wait for the tea. That's the timer saying that the tea is done in five minutes. Here I have the microwave water. Now I'm just gonna dump this out. This cup is fairly hot right now. Hot cup, tea strainer. I'm gonna pour it in here. It's slightly more concentrated than usual today, but um, this is a good color. It'll still taste very good. Now over here is a new can of condensed milk. I already have some over here. After you open this, you pour it into a plastic container like this. 
so that you can store in the refrigerator. Now remember, when you pour this out into a new container, don't heat the condensed milk in this can in order to try to get it out. Just put it upside down and leave it somewhere like this and let it fall out. Over here, I'm gonna put some condensed milk here and what I do is stick my spoon in there and the amount I put in is very specific. This is how much I wanna put in. I don't know how much this is. I guess I can go and measure it. Hold on. I guess what I'm using, it's also roughly one level tablespoon of uh, condensed milk. Okay, so I can just stick this all in here and it'll melt off of the spoon. You can see as it melts, the color of my milk tea changes to a very rich color, I guess. Now you can indeed just drink this if you're okay with very, very low sugar. What you may find is that this is not sweet enough and I drink a very, very low sugar type of tea. So I don't even need all that much. What I like to do is add another half teaspoon of sugar into this concoction here. So you can say this condensed milk is not very sweet, but you don't want to add more condensed milk in here because this is the maximum amount of cream that you want in here already. If you add too much cream, then it'll taste kind of weird. One tablespoon is good enough over here. This is actually the second milk tea I'm having for today. The first one, the camera was out of focus, so I have to do this again. Anyway, when you're making this milk tea, you gotta make sure the black tea is strong enough in order for the flavor to come through. Which brings in an important point. If you don't wanna have that much sugar, you can drink this black tea again and again throughout the day. If you want to make another black tea with the same tea, you can actually brew it again I'd brew it for a little bit longer, maybe seven or eight minutes in order to try to get the flavor out more. Now I've used a lot of different things for the creamer, including powdered creamer, half and half, full fat milk, and now I've switched to condensed milk. I would say out of all of those, half and half is pretty reasonable, but when you use regular milk, it actually dilutes your milk tea a bit. So it does taste not as rich. When you use condensed milk, there's less water content in there, so you don't dilute your tea as much, therefore it tastes more rich. Of course, the second brewing does not taste as good. It tastes a little bit more diluted than the first, of course. Now, what can you do if you don't have any creamer at all? If you have ice cream, you can actually dunk one tablespoon of that into your coffee or tea, and you can use that as your creamer. When you use a certain kind of tea, it depends on which kind, of course, you'll taste the aroma. Sometimes it tastes almost even chocolatey. What I find is that if I have the milk tea by itself and I don't do anything else, I'm not reading articles, I'm not on the computer, I'm not recording a video or anything, I get the most enjoyment out of it because I'm just sipping it. It's at its peak in terms of temperature and it's not cooling down really, really fast and I'm concentrating on the flavor instead. When I'm doing something else, what I find happen is that Yes, I do get enjoyment from the tea, but then my attention is focused on something else and I'm just, you know, having it as I'm doing something else. When I'm in front of the camera, I actually do enjoy this almost just as much as not doing anything at all because essentially after every time I talk, I do take a sip of this. This loose leaf tea, you might be wondering what brand is it? It's Ten Ren's tea. I often go and shop some loose leaf tea whenever there's something good. I don't always stay with Ten Ren. This is the only bag I've bought. Ten Ren is a tea shop and they happen to also sell milk tea. It's popular in Taiwan. They also have a store in the Bay Area. So thanks for watching this video. It's taking me 10 years to get to this point of making this type of milk tea. This is Beat the Bush. Don't forget to give me a like on this video. And if you're interested in supporting this channel, I have an audible link down in the video description below where you can get a free audiobook. I also have a Patreon over here. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.